Well, folks, last night we truly did watch history in the making as Kamala Harris accepted the nomination for President of the United States. I want to thank everyone last night who tuned in here on the channel to uh, watch along with me. I'm really glad that we got to share such an historic moment together. I said leading up to her speech, I said, man, she's really going to have to knock this thing out of the park because there were so many great speeches all week long. I was like, there was a lot of tough acts for her to follow. And then she just gets up there and knocks this solid home run and brought it and brought the energy and brought the excitement. And I'll keep saying this till election day, hold on to this energy, hold on to this excitement, bottle it up and don't let it go because we have to get her over the finish line come November. Uh, it truly was a great speech and I'm seeing a lot of the reactions that MAG has given. I'm going to do a video later on Donald Trump's little meltdown about it all. But uh, MAGA is basically saying that all she did was just attack Trump and talk about how she doesn't like Trump. That's a lot of what I'm seeing. And what I would point out that this is not about us just not liking Donald Trump. It's not, it's not that simple. I know in their world, everything is just that simple, but that's really not what it is. It's about what he stands for. It's about what he wants to usher in. And it's about the fact that his followers will go along with all of this. It's what you guys are willing to accept from him that we're standing against. And at the DNC, we saw more Republicans at the DNC this year than we've ever seen. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video also on Adam Kinzinger's speech because that was a classic. We're seeing more and more Republicans speaking out against this because they can't stand with what Donald Trump is about. They can't get behind what it is that he's about. But what I love so good here from Kamala is something you'll never hear from the other side is she's saying, you know what? I'm going to be a president for everyone and not just Democrats. I'm here for Republicans, independents. I'm, I'm all of your president. Take a look. Let me say, I know there are people of various political views watching tonight. And I want you to know, I promise to be a president for all Americans. You can always trust me to put country above party and self, to hold sacred America's fundamental principles from the rule of law to free and fair elections to the peaceful transfer of power. Now, I know what some are going to say. They're going to say, but Donald Trump has said in the past that he would be a president for everybody. Well, my argument would be this. You can't say that and then be behind Project 2025. You can't say that when you stripped away fundamental human rights from women. You can't say that when you are putting up laws into place to make other people's lives harder. You can't say that when you're talking about mass deportations, okay? So you can stand up there all day long and say, yeah, I'll be a president for all the people. But then if you put up walls that makes life harder for other people, that's not standing for all Americans. And so I truly feel that uh, Kamala Harris uh, always has and always will stand for all of us. And it won't be about the party lines. And folks, that's really it for me. Going into this election for the first time in my life, I'm not even thinking about that I'm voting Democrat or that I'm voting against a Republican. That's not where my mind is at all. It's about the fact that I'm voting to preserve, protect, and defend democracy. I never thought we would be there, but that's exactly where we are. Now, Kamala started bringing the receipts, which I think is always important. I know a lot of these things might have been uncomfortable for Trump supporters to hear, but that's just because they're true. His presidency did lead to Roe versus Wade being overturned. His presidency did lead to the government being in your doctor's office. And so I was so glad that she brought these receipts. I believe... America cannot truly be prosperous unless Americans are fully able to make their own decisions about their own lives, especially on matters of heart and home. But tonight in America, too many women are not able to make those decisions. And let's be clear about how we got here. Donald Trump handpicked members of the United States Supreme Court to take away reproductive freedom. And now he brags about it. In his words, quote, I did it and I'm proud to have done it, end quote. Well, I'll tell you, over the past two years, I've traveled across our country and women have told me their stories. 
Husbands and fathers have shared theirs. Stories of women miscarrying in a parking lot, developing sepsis, losing the ability to ever again have children, all because doctors are afraid they may go to jail for caring for their patients. Couples just trying to grow their family, cut off in the middle of IVF treatments. Children who have survived sexual assault, potentially being forced to carry a pregnancy to term. This is what's happening in our country because of Donald Trump. And understand, he is not done. As a part of his agenda, he and his allies would limit access to birth control, ban medication abortion, and enact a nationwide abortion ban with or without Congress. And get this, get this, he plans to create a national anti-abortion coordinator and force states to report on women's miscarriages and abortions. Simply put, they are out of their minds. Again, to everyone out there who says, oh, she was just out there bringing her hatred for Trump. No, she was pointing out what he'd done. She was bringing the receipts. Donald Trump's presidency led to Roe versus Wade being overturned. Him putting those Supreme Court justices there is exactly what got us in this mess. And to everyone out there that tries to act smart and go, oh, well, they just kicked it back to the states, man. You, you may think that that's some sort of flex, but it's not. When, okay, let me break this down as simple as I can. If you live here in Tennessee and you're not allowed to get an abortion, now let's say that your uncle, heaven forbid, impregnates you against your will and you don't want to carry that child to term or you have some sort of medical emergency arise that you can't have that child and you try to leave Tennessee and go to a state where that they can help you, well, if they're going to force your state to bring you back home and prosecute you and prosecute the doctors and keep a monitor on you, that's not just kicking it back to the states. Can you not see that? That's what I don't understand when I see people making that state's argument. It's like, it, that's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's absolutely irrelevant if that's going to be the hurdles that women face. So come down off of that. They send it back to the state's argument because it holds no water whatsoever. There's no legs to that argument. And there's definitely no legs whatsoever in wanting the approval of dictators. And I'm so glad again that Kamala points this out, that this dude has a weird obsession for dictators. Take a look. I will not cozy up to tyrants and dictators like Kim Jong-un who are rooting for Trump. Who are rooting for Trump. Because you know, they know, they know he is easy to manipulate with flattery and favors. They know Trump won't hold autocrats accountable because he wants to be an autocrat himself. And as president, I will never waver in defense of America's security and ideals because in the enduring struggle between democracy and tyranny, I know where I stand and I know where the United States belongs. You know, folks, I've thought about this one a lot. I can't imagine what would have happened if I'd have went to my grandfather who was a World War II veteran. I can't imagine what would have happened if I'd have went to him when I was a kid and said, hey, Papa, this dictator over here, he loves us. Or we need to act so, we need to act so that this dictator here will approve of us, Papa. We need to have his approval. My ears would ring for three days once he got done ranting in my head about why he didn't give a flying fuck about what a dictator thought of him or thought of this country. It's crazy to me that we have a guy out there flexing for dictators and people going along with it. Oh yeah, man, Kim Jong-un, he likes Trump. We don't care who he likes. As a matter of fact, him liking you is no flex whatsoever, okay? That's like saying Ted Bundy loves your mom, okay? It's, it, it's not the flex that you think it is. But what I loved seeing so much at 
the DNC was them bringing the receipts, bringing Project 2025 out every night, laying it down, opening it up and reading from it because that's what you have to do. You have to bring the receipts and Kamala had to point this one out. Take a look. What a second Trump term would look like. It's all laid out in Project 2025, written by his closest advisors, and its sum total is to pull our country back to the past. But America, we are not going back. Affordable Care Act, when insurance companies could deny people with pre-existing conditions. We are not going to let him eliminate the Department of Education that funds our public schools. We are not going to let him end programs like Head Start that provide preschool and child care for our children. America, we are not going back. You know what's funny about this? Donald Trump actually said that the left, the left knows that he's got nothing to do with Project 2025. Well, I hate to tell you this, buddy. We brought it out every night at the DNC and we pointed it out because we're not going to let you run from this one. And we're also not going to let you run away from the fact that you didn't want to fix the border because you wanted to campaign on it. Take a look at this. After decades in law enforcement, I know the importance of safety and security, especially at our border. Last year, Joe and I brought together Democrats and conservative Republicans to write the strongest border bill in decades. The Border Patrol endorsed it. But Donald Trump believes a border deal would hurt his campaign. So he ordered his allies in Congress to kill the deal. Well, I refuse to play politics with our security, and here is my pledge to you. As president, I will bring back the bipartisan border security bill that he killed, and I will sign it into law. I'll be dead honest with you. Whenever I see Trump supporters complaining about the border, I just keep scrolling because the fact that they sat back and let Trump kill the deal and was proud of him for doing it so he could campaign on it, tells me that they just wanted something to argue about and they didn't truly understand what was going on and they didn't care enough about the issue to actually fix it because they wanted somehow for him to get the credit for it. Well, he didn't fix it the first time and he stood in the way of it being fixed this time. Why in the hell should we ever trust him to ever fix it? He's not going to because as long as he's got the problems and as long as he's got the fear and the propaganda, he's got his base. But I saved this clip here for last, folks, because, again, this is not about our dislike for Donald Trump. It's about what he stands for, and it's about what a second Donald Trump term would usher in. And this is so important to watch. In many ways, Donald Trump is an unserious man. <laughs> but the consequences, but the consequences of putting Donald Trump back in the White House are extremely serious. <laughs> consider, consider not only the chaos and calamity when he was in office, but also the gravity of what has happened since he lost the last election. Donald Trump tried to throw away your votes. When he failed, he sent an armed mob to the United States Capitol where they assaulted law enforcement officers. When politicians in his own party begged him to call off the mob and send help, he did the opposite. He fanned the flames. And now, for an entirely different set of crimes, he was found guilty of fraud by a jury of everyday Americans and separately, and separately found liable for committing sexual abuse. And consider, consider what he intends to do if we give him power again. Consider 
his explicit intent to set free violent extremists who assaulted those law enforcement officers at the Capitol. His explicit intent to jail journalists, political opponents, and anyone he sees as the enemy. His explicit intent to deploy our active duty military against our own citizens. Consider, consider the power he will have, especially after the United States Supreme Court just ruled that he would be immune from criminal prosecution. Just imagine Donald Trump with no guardrails. I'll say this, Donald Trump with no guardrails would be an absolute disaster. It would be the end of American democracy forever as we know it. But that being said, I do not want Kamala Harris to be president with no guardrails. I do not want any future president, Republican, Democrat, Independent, if some new party emerges. I don't care who they are. I don't care what label they put on themselves. I do not want a president who has immunity and who has no guardrails and can do whatever they want to do. If you have to be able to break every law in the book to do the job, you're not fit or qualified to do the job in the story. But folks, I'm so proud of Kamala Harris. I'm proud that she's our nominee. I can't wait to cast my vote for her. We've got the energy right now. We've got the excitement. We've got it in the bottle, okay? We've got it. Hold on to it. Don't let it go. Stay focused on things and keep bringing those receipts every time. I know it's going to get intense between now and then. Mag is coming unraveled because they're seeing us get, come together, and uh, that's a good thing. So you're going to get hit with a lot of, you know, stupid comments over the next couple of weeks. You're going to get hit with all sorts of, you know, higher brain conspiracies and all this ridiculous stuff. Like Bill Clinton said in his speech, they specialize in distraction. That's what they're best at. Don't be distracted. Go back and keep the energy you had last night watching Kamala Harris accept the nomination. Keep that energy. Keep it all the way to November. And let's defeat this radical extremism once and for all.